Hi everyone, hope you're well and welcome along to another Gran Turismo Sport video, but this one's going to be quite different. We're going to be doing something quite exciting, a little bit scary, but it's something I've talked about for a while on the channel and the live streams and the videos in my Discord, and I'm going to try and help some of the people in the Kirith Kart community get a little bit faster on GT Sport. So we're going to use Daily Race B this week as an example. It's Catalonia um, in Group 3 cars. I set a qualifying time of 143.5, which is quite a good time. It was top 40 in the world for a little bit. And I think it went down to top 70, but it's a good time. It's a good time for me. My optimal is a 0.2, which would be obscene for me. But we're going to try and help some of the people down here in the Friends leaderboard just get a little bit faster. And any tenth that they can find, any couple of tenths, you know, maybe a second if they're a little bit further down, how amazing would that be to actually help people in the community get faster on GT Sport and just help them on that journey. So if I can do that, great. If I can't, well, I tried. <laughs> so we're going to jump into it now. We'll jump into a practice lobby. I'm going to record the whole thing. Um, never done this before, so let's see how it goes. Okay, let's kick this off then. Um, everyone's a little bit warmed up. So I'm going to do three laps now. And, you know, my, my hope is to get into the 143s. That, that would be a, a, a very good lap for me. And I'd 100% take that in, in, in any race I would do. Ooh, what was that? What was that lap time? Okay, okay we're, we're already there. Okay, I'm happy. That's incredible. So we'll, we'll do one more. I'll talk through it. So I'm breaking just around that black box left-hand side. Definitely going down to second gear here. Getting as far over to the right-hand side as possible. And I lift here a little bit so I don't run wide onto this green strip. Come out a little bit. The time at lightens. I won't hit an apex. And there's an orange barrel on the left-hand side. That's when I get on full throttle. And just feed the car out. I do have to go up to fifth here, otherwise I'll hit the limiter. Break just for the shadow. Go a little bit deep, like off the apex, off the throttle, and then on the apex now. Uh, sorry, on the throttle now. Break here, just some marks on the curb there, some tyre marks. Definitely go over this curb and feed in the throttle here. Really gentle on the throttle. I'm going to go down to third here, break just before the start of the curb and right the side. Kind of get close to the curb inside and try and keep the revs up basically otherwise you're really sort of bogged down i go down to 30 it should be a fairly late apex don't be off the throttle too much because it is a fast corner up to fifth again breaking around the box and around side here all the way down to first gear try and just clip that curb get on the power as soon as possible and control the over the overseer if you can second gear here a couple of ways you can take this corner just come out a little bit for a double apex on the power. Up to third, going to go down second here. Just don't run too wide because the camber's not nice. Brake here, take it really easy the first bit, and then just clip the kerb for the second bit. Up to third, should be flat now all the way if you've got the exit correct. We're going to go over the line, and that is going to be another 143.9. So I think I'm pretty much there. I'm going to. That's two laps. Fairly consistent, I would, I would argue, <laughs> um, but I, I would struggle to go much quicker than that. Um, kind of in a session like that, we can all meet at turn one, basically. If that works, I can see people people jumping on. Meet at turn one. Meet you on the corner. Yeah, and I want to kind of just put together everything I've seen. But it's been really interesting to see people's different driving styles. Some people seem quite aggressive um, turning the car, which means the car's unsettled and it's not maximizing the grip. Some people are, are smoother, um, but actually kind of, you know, there's a lot more grip to use. Um, it's interesting. Right. I think everyone is here apart from Dan. So anyway, we'll start here, Dan can catch up. Right, so what I've noticed here, obviously the, the braking marker is this little box, this first one on the left-hand side. Um, and if you go, if everyone drives along the rumble strip now, you can feel how, especially on the wheel, I think it must be on the pad, just how much vibration you get from the rumble strip. And for me, that's just good information to have because I can almost, again, subconsciously know how long that rumble is going on for before I turn in. And when do you turn in at this? At this um, it's it's at it's difficult for me to know exactly when I'm turning, but I'm definitely aiming to get all over that curb on the inside. But I. I don't want to be this far away from the kerb. I want to be on the... I don't want to be on the green stuff, but I definitely want to have wheels on the kerb there. Okay. So wheels on the kerb, turning in, and there's a little sausage kerb here. 
And I actually aim to get my inside wheel on or around this oscilloscope. It doesn't really bounce you around. Um, because I know this is going to set me up for the next few corners. So when I was looking at you, to the last one, I know that we, w we went in too hot for it. But if you're a car length to the, to the left here, it's going to completely mess you up for the next few corners. So this is really critical. This is probably the most critical bit of this corner is hitting this sausage curb. So we get there, we're in second gear. And then turn in, and then there's a bit of a lift. Because if you don't lift, you'll end up over here and it's, you'll end up on the green stuff. So a bit of a lift to keep it tighter. And I often kind of get very I get very close to the green here, but not on it. So I'm coming out to the middle of the track, and then I turn in. And so I've seen much more people miss this apex and get on the apex, if that makes sense. So most people are kind of over here. So I think people need to be turning in a bit earlier. Generally, I think ECU a little bit different because you were getting on the grass here. And then on the apex, patience, patience, patience. And then this is just a timing thing. You you kind of get into a groove and you know that when you get on the power and you're turning, you're not lifting anymore and you're not going to run too wide. So you have to go up to um, fifth gear here. Whoops. And braking just for the shadow. And I actually, what I do here is I, I overshoot the apex. So I think for anyone who wasn't um, aggressive enough on the brakes today, this is one where you should be trying to stop the car past the apex. So this is the point I rotate the car. I'm not rotating it on the apex, all this space here. And I coast, 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 coast. Let the car get pointed this way until I'm sometimes on the curb because actually being on the curb can help you rotate the car. But again, similar to the previous corner, then on the power at a point where I'm not going to understeer off. Um, you know, sometimes I get on the power too early and, it, and I end up over here and it feels bad. But actually, when I look at the timing, it's not too bad because I've just carried more speed. So if you're over here, it's not the worst thing in the world because you can get it over here. As we said, really tricky corner. Here are the time marks. Down to second gear. And again, I just, I coast a lot more here than I used to. Coast, 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 coast. Definitely aim to get onto this curb. And then feeding the throttle. Now, I, I didn't really understand this corner before. But... Now I do a bit better. It's all about the exit and feeding in the power. And when I set my really good lap times here, I'm on the green like this. I'm really close to the gravel. Because if I'm on the green here, it means I'm on the power so, so early. Um, whereas if I'm not on the green, it means I'm probably not getting on the power early enough because I'm I'm um, still trying to turn the car in. But you don't need you don't need to. You can use this stuff on the outside. You can add, the greens a really nice launch pad. I mean, look at the time marks here. It's a really nice launch up to the next corner. But really tricky that one. It's it's taken me a long time to work out. This next one is the real tricky. Yeah. So so the obvious thing is, if you brake on this curb, you can spin the car. Now it's not it's not a really bad spin actually. You often don't um kind of go backwards. But you can see that blue RCZ there. That's where you kind of end up, like, sideways. Yeah, this this one's all about flow to me, and I'll try and just do it really slowly. So I'm braking, third gear, um, and then kind of easing in the car, and then I'm apexing here, and again, I'm feeding in the throttle. Now, you, you need to feed in the throttle here. If you do it too hard, it's really easy to oversteer and go into the left, and on eye racing, it's really easy to hit that barrier on the left. Whereas here, now, I'm feeding the power, and this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this. So that's how far I am to the right-hand side. So if you're not on the... If, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not on the... This is the corner where I'm most likely to get a track limit. Because if you go, if you're off the curb, you get a track limit. Um, but I often don't feel too bad about getting a track limit here, because I feel like, yeah, I've taken it properly. So if you're on the tarmac, again, you're just not going to be maximising your, your speed through this corner. And um, these curbs are absolutely no problem. So, but this is a really tricky, this is probably as tricky as it gets in terms of circuits, actually, this complex. This is like 10 out of 10 trickiness, so. And if there's one little bit you're not doing right, the whole thing will just fall apart. Um, but if you are doing it right, you will be exiting like this. Uh, I didn't understand what you were saying about turning in on this next last one. This bit here? Yeah. 
I think I said someone was turning in too early. So, I turn in. I actually think I lift and sometimes add the brake, and then I turn in after the curb ends. Now, there's a little sausage curb on the inside here. Anyone who's on the curb here before the sausage curb is, just, is not taking this corner correctly. Um, you want to really be apexing, I think, on or around, sorry, on or after the sausage curb. And actually, you don't need to be all over the curb. You can just kind of graze it. The fastest line through here might be to not touch the curb at all, to be honest. It's that fast a corner. Um, you can see Barry was just grazing it there, and that was a, that was a good line. I, I want to make sure I'm answering the question here correctly, um, because if if you apex here, so if everyone comes back and and kind of tries to be where my car is now, and then has a look, have a look at how the corner exit looks. Like, look how tight you're making this corner. Th this is not a fast corner anymore. This is a, a relatively tight corner. You cannot be flat from There's here. So many cars I got to. Which one are you? I'm um, um, the blue one at the front of the pack. Yeah. So, but come, yeah. get really close. Get really close. This is like I'm simulating someone apexing here. Got my handbrake on now. And have a look at how the corner exit looks. Like that should feel early. Because if I get on the full power now, I'm not going to make that corner. I have to lift again. Gravel, right? right now, let's let's inch forward a little bit. Now have a look here. So again, try and place the car exact, exactly where I am. Have a look at this corner looks. Now this looks like you can do it flat. Or get close to it, right? Or it looks easier, essentially. Now this corner is all, all about the exit. Because we got a long straight after. So we kind of clip the curb, ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it. And obviously, you know, here you're now in a position where you can lift off a little bit. So you don't go wide. The track limit here is off the red and white curb. Um... If you want to set a good lap time, you, you absolutely have to be in this kind of position. So again, if you're a car width to the right, imagine how much speed you're losing by not being able to just go out here. Um, this is 100% the line. Look at the tyre marks again, you can see. Coming on. I suppose for a lot of people about tra track width and using the track width, that, these are good examples of that. I'll get up here. Two, two different philosophies to this corner. You, you can go really deep and get a good cutback, or you can break early. Um, obviously, don't break too early, but around this box on the right side, you don't need to massively be over the curb here. I'm not sure I'm massively over it. You can see there's not a lot of tyre marks on the curb. Um, but definitely go down the gears early. And uh, when I really enjoy this corner, I'm, I'm all over it like this. All over this green bit. Sorry? My question is, uh, actually, during the races, mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I've been spun by people diving. Um, yeah, go, go defensive. You can make this corner easily defensive. Um, so it, cause if, if you're leaving something up the inside and then kind of... Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll do this properly. So let me go back. So let's say you're doing you're doing you um you're kind of taking the normal line and you're over here yeah and someone a long way behind you who's not going to make the corner goes for an overtake as you naturally come in here yeah this is where you're going to get dive bombed yeah as they come in and they can't make the corner and they use you as a break so if you go defensive either they're going to downright punt you which is actually you know if we if we're honest about things more stuff happens in gt sport about kind of people not being able to control the car than downright punters, to be honest. So you're less likely to have an issue if you, if you stay narrow. And you can still make this corner. So if you go narrow, you just go a little bit deep like this, stay off the throttle and irritate it. Um, if, if anyone's not getting oversteer here on the exit, you're probably not being aggressive enough. You really do need to get a little bit of oversteer on exit. Um, if you're not, you're just not getting on the power early enough. So you need to be in first gear in pretty much all of the cars, I think and kind of getting that overstate which prevents you from going too wide here. Um, so if this feels like a gentle corner, it shouldn't be. This is the most hairy bit of the circuit, actually. Maybe apart from last chicane, because you have a lot of overspeed, you're getting on the power a lot really early, and you need to counter-steer it. Yeah, it's been off. Not much to talk about here. I have got a track cuts a few times here, actually. It's kind of almost impressive in a way, but nothing to talk about there. Two ways of doing this corner. Now, I would say that if your if your lap times on the forty sevens, you're probably doing the thing where you just kind of stick to this curb and go around very slowly. So 
I would recommend trying the other way, which is break a little bit deeper, so you end up in this part of the track here. Get your rotation done, which means be off the throttle, be off the brake, let the car rotate, and then clip the apex here for a second exit. Just There are two ways of doing it, and actually the, the, the way of hugging it can be very fast, but I suspect it's almost like a comfort way of doing it, and you can just hug it all the way around, whereas this way will force you to brake a bit late to actually be in that part of the track. Take a swig of water, apparently. Sorry? There's at least two bends on this track where you sort of touch the inside, balloon out, and then come back in. And yes. I say if you have a slightly understeer, uh, sorry, oversteery car, that's helpful for that because it helps you rotate on the second bit. Yeah, so I get really... Um, you can actually touch the gravel here. It's not It's not really that bad because you're about to stay the car down anyway. But definitely getting all over here. Um, now, I still haven't mastered this corner. There's a few times I've done this corner, I've got a really nice slide going on. And the slide is, like, massively beneficial. But anyway, regularly... Don't touch this kerb here because it will unsettle the car, but you definitely want to be really close to that kerb and you don't, you you absolutely do not want to be here. You, you don't, you don't want to be too far here. Definitely keep it narrow. Um, this, this whole complex is about sacrificing speed for the final exit. So again, now have a look how I take, I'm going to try and show you how I take this, which is basically eat this kerb like that. And if you eat it, a bit like going over a speed bump in your real car, you don't start the car. Now, this bit here... Now, the good thing about doing time trial practice daily race C is you can actually just restart this bit over and over again if you want. But this is how I take this kerb. Like that. And it doesn't unsettle the car. For, for some reason, if you respect the kerb more... Like, it probably can't... It's difficult to see my car now. But if you respect the car more like this... You're, really, you're more likely to bounce it. So you it's, gotta really cut it. Yeah, you have to really cut it. And almost, I, I gave an example on stream, I think this week. In baseball or stuff like that, when you have to run around bases, you know, a baseball player trying to get a home run really shortens his distance around the bases and he just touches them with his foot, right? He, he grazes yeah. the base. That's the approach I use here. It's just graze the curb. And the track limits here are just incredibly forgiving. So I would say actively try and get a track limit here in practice. Work out what it takes to get a track limit and you will be surprised, I can, I can guarantee you. Um, and what this allows you to do is, especially if you're taking a slightly higher gear, so even if first might be more responsive, I would take it in second to minimise the over, over speed and um, oversteer. It allows you to just kind of really easily take this. Don't go over the sausage because you get a track limit. In fact, I think it might be if you go if you go past the red and white curb, that might be the trap limit. If you take the last bit easily, there's no no troubles. <coughs> and then this bit is just really nice, neaty flat on the medium tire. On the hard tire, this bit's a pain. But on the medium tire, it's just really nice. And if you have to lift, you know, no problem. Do a little bit of a vanity lift, and um, and you get a really nice exit, and it will save you just an incredible amount of time. If you're doing it in time trial, where you have your blue delta on you will see just how much time it saves. So has anyone got any questions about those laps? Anything that seemed a bit unusual or different to what you normally do? I struggle with the... Um, not the first turn. Not the chicane the first turn. You know, the long right-hander. Uh, the, just after the first quarter. Through. Yeah, so the one where through. it's, it's yeah. kind of... It's not obvious where you should get on the power. Yeah, yeah. I know there is a barrier on that, the left-hand side, the orange barrier that you look for, but I always okay. feel that it's, I can never, like, guarantee, I never feel confident through that corner at all. Let's, let's go there. Let's go there now. Because there's no rules here. I've never done this before, so we just, we kind of do what we want. Right, so, firstly, I see a lot of people stay really tight here, which, which is, I don't think is a good thing to do. So... I lift, whoops, I lift around this part of the corner, obviously I'm not this far to the left, but I lift this part of the corner so I can have a nice little arc like this. And you can see the tarmac lightens. There's almost a lighter river of tarmac. Don't know if anyone can see yeah. that. Yeah, can see that. Yep. So, so that's what I try yep. and follow. That kind of guides me towards the apex. And you can either brake or lift. I don't think there's actually too much difference. And then if you see a Mr. MCA video, I'm sure the way he does his lap, guys, is he often looks at 
external like you know trees fences whatnot and says get on the power here i, I don't personally like that because my background in karting just doesn't work like that you have to look at the track and stuff close to the track you can't kind of the way vision works is you're either looking close or far and it's difficult to do both at the same time but anyway for here i think it does work so that orange barrier when you kind of see it in your peripheral vision you should definitely get on the power but i would say experiment try getting on the power as early as you think you can and if you get on the power and you understeer onto this stuff you know you got onto the power a little bit too early because you really don't want to yeah. get onto this stuff at all but definitely push yeah. it in that direction any more question any, though, yep go on. which orange barrier is it because there's two i go to the first orange barrier the one that you just passed that's not the orange barrier that you I think it's, it's not, I think it's the first one. That one. Hang on, bear with me. It's not that one. No, 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 one no. That's where it's too late. Okay. Good reversing skills. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That one to the left. Yeah, but you should by the at the point you do it also, you should be I believe very close to the curb. So if you're not close okay. to the curb and you do it, you're already more likely to understeer off the track. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. It's part of the reason why I really like this track is it's all about angles and the optimal positioning of the car. It's it's not just about instinct and yeah, you've got to be really quick on the throttle. Actually there's a lot of patience involved. Okay, any any more questions? I I actually want to take you to the next left hander because for me that's often been the trickiest corner at this track. Just yeah. what to do. This one, you have to come out a little bit and then get on the power now. And if you have a bit of an oversteer car, it's really enjoyable this corner. Because the oversteer prevents you from understeering off here, which is always painful. Because you feel like, oh, I'm completely on the wrong side of the track now. But there's some, just some tyre marks here. Can you see just where the tyre marks go onto the kerb? Yeah? yeah? Sorry? Is that where you're braking? Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm braking. Um, I also, and I think a lot of people do this, kind of time it to the revs as well. But the if you if you were to break here, you would go so deep, and I, I can't tell you how much time you lose. You might lose up to a second. Um, it's just really horrendous. Um, so the aim at this corner, for me, is to just try and touch this curb. Um, and one of my driving faults has been, I think, you know, when I spoke with driver sixty one and other people like that. You know, we, we spoke about the length actually from karting is I tend to not get off the throttle even when I'm going around corners so I, I'm applying a little bit of throttle because in karting you, you normally want to keep the revs up especially in the road tax where it will bog down so at a corner like this I used to really struggle because I'd never just let the car coast and get close I'd always be on the throttle and, and understeer but um, I have improved that in my driving so you want to touch that curve. Is it, do you uh... I'm a bit unclear where the breaking point that you're using is then. For this corner? Yeah. It okay, let's like go to it. It looked like the same point that you were explaining. This, this is where we're going to oversteer. Right. So I I looked to the outside here. I think I've seen the Mr. MC video where he, again, he I think he looks to the fencing or something. Um, he's normally in third person, so I think he he break. So you see the fencing on the inside, and I might be getting this wrong. Mm. And I massively rate Mr. MCA. You should definitely subscribe to his videos if you just want to get a track guide because they are superb and he's very quick. But for example, my vision is not. See the fence at the left there. I'm in third person view, by the way. So the fence ends, and that's where you should break. But my vision isn't there. My vision is at the curb, um, and then very quickly we'll switch to the apex. So I'm breaking here, same place. But I'm looking at these marks on the tarmac, um, yeah. and it's a little bit by feel because obviously it's, it's a long braking marker. It's not like a box, but you can see it starts here, and they kind of curve on, and I'm braking around that that point. No one is exact, by the way, unless you're in Formula One. You're not braking on dime. I'm roughly braking around there. Okay. I think what less away. yeah less um so I'm going to go to spectating mode. Why don't you all jump out and I will flick through you. I'll let everyone know in chat who I'm watching and I'll just try to provide some tips. Question, you know, in relation to braking. Yep. Am I left foot um, braking, did you say? No, no, sorry. So in relation to braking, I, yeah. I, have, I think I have trouble sometimes whether you kind of brake and gear down really quickly 
or yep. slowly. So my, and inherently, I always gear down fairly slowly. But I know, for example, in the Group 2 cars, if you want to be, you know, a top 100 qualifying time, you need to gear down very quickly to get that engine braking. I would say what's more important is just about the rhythmic feel. Because I often use the braking to kind of rhythmically get me to the turning point. I don't know if that makes any sense if anyone else does it. But I, it's all part of the rhythm of the corner. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't go too quickly um, because that can unsettle the car. Especially in something like the R8. I think when you quickly go down to first gear, that unsettles it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, if you go down too slowly, you might lose some engine braking. But I'd, inherently, I'd rather say better to be smooth and just smash down the gears. Yeah. You're un unlikely to lose a whole amount of time. Unless you're in a Group 2 car, then I, I act and or a um, Super Formula car. I play Formula 1 a lot, so that you have to shift down if you want to go from Yeah, so it's, it's also for a Formula 1 car decelerates a lot more quickly, so that's just the nature of it, whereas a Group 3 actually doesn't that much. You'll be going down three gears most of the time, which isn't like the six gears you're doing in F1 car. Right, I'm going to start. Um, if anyone feels like they want to, they're kind of warmed up and would like me to start looking at them, then then let me know and I can do that. If not, I will pick, I will pick on someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to start with you, Dan, because you just started a lap. With me? Yep. So I can see you going yeah, through that turn three. And again, if anyone feels like there's just a bit too much pressure or you're not ready yet, if I'm spectating, you let me know and I can I can go elsewhere. That was a perfect place to break for that left-hander hairpin. But I, th I, I don't think you got off the throttle for that. Did you see how much you understeered at that corner? Yeah. That's a nice line. My main tip, Dan, is that you're de they're definitely um, keeping on the throttle during corners and getting on the throttle too early. So the last three corners I've seen, you've kind of got yeah. on the throttle too early and then had to get off and then get on the throttle again. And that, that whole process is meaning that you're understeering. You're not letting the car rotate. So I think if you if you actively try, especially when you do that left-hander hairpin we talked about with the awkward um, braking marker, if you definitely try to just be longer off the throttle than you think, you'll save a lot of time because you'll understand less. Right, I'll, I'll come back. Let's let's go and board with James. I'm aware that I've muted James. I can see you've got traction control on, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. You can still get a good lap time. It's not quite as quick because you lose time through the gear changes, but perfectly fine. I can see you on a pad as well. So the first thing I'm noticing, and again, this is unfortunately this is like a one-way conversation, but you're you're not using all of the track width, which I think is exacerbated on, on the pad because you're having to make quite sharp movements. So on that corner there, I I go all the way past the curb onto the green patch just to make it a bit smoother. So as you go into turn one this time, try and really keep to the left-hand side of the track. You can actually use the kerb to brake on, and sometimes I do that. So you don't have to worry about grass here or anything like that. So try and keep to the left-hand side. There's a nice bit of green on the outside. Try and really open it up. Perfect. You can even um, you can feel the rumble strip when you go over it. And again, use the width here. Yes, yeah, so there's about, about a metre more you could use there, which will just mean your exit speed will be greater. This one's tricky as you all the track with, but and I'm not the best to kind of coach on on a pad, to be honest. But the the movements do look, um, 
you know, quite aggressive. I'm looking at the uh, the red dot. So any way you can be smoother is going to help you because ultimately the the aggressive movements are just unsettling the car every time. I do know that's a lot hard on the pad. So that's at least three meters kind of more track width. So I, th I think that's the main point, James, from what I'm seeing. Is um, think about going from white line to white line. Right, we'll come back. We'll come back, James. Let's jump aboard with with Meltinio. He's your fast here is a one forty seven point six so far. In the Lamborghini, which I tried on stream, was it yesterday or day before? And I just I really struggled with it. So much you on the wheel, correct? Yep. Okay. Okay, using a lot of the track width there, which is nice. Do you always go down to first gear for that last chicane? Oh, uh, yes. Mm, maybe try it in second. It might feel slower, but it might just give you a bit more stability. We'll keep going until I've, until I've gone through everyone. I think that's that's important. So I can see what what you're doing in that corner, Melty, is you're kind of holding half throttle a lot of the way. But I think what would be better is if you go in a lot faster and then kind of be off the throttle and coast and then get on full throttle I think that'll mean you'll take a tighter line through that bit. Good, ro good rotation there. And very smooth and throttled, that was really nice. Yeah, I struggled there in the Lambo, big time. Right, let me look at the last sector again. And I think just gen- Oh, okay. <laughs> We keep going. We keep going. Let's look at, let's go to the last sector. I think generally, if you're on the wheel, you should be able to be quite a bit smoother, if possible. Just think about being smooth, even if it feels slower, because again, the aggressive movements are just unsettling the car, and it, it means you lose grip. So that feel a little bit more stable on the exit, just there was no yeah. wheel spin thing. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so the, the interesting of the humility is that for a lot of corners, I'm, for the longer corners, I'm seeing you kind of just hold half throttle going around it. Whereas what I do is I go in, you know, deeper into the corner, brake, off the throttle, let the car really rotate off the throttle, and then get on full throttle. Because if you're on half throttle like this corner, We'll just kind of un understeer around it. So yeah, so I can see that you're, you're trying to be off throttle there. So you need, if you're going to be off the throttle for part of the corner, it gives you the ability to go in harder initially. Then you can rotate and get on the power. That's quite a big um, fundamental change to the way you're approaching at the moment. Right, he. Let's have a look at he. I said to say very consistent. Yeah, they're sure. <laughs> well, let's let's see. Say, no traction control. Right, let's have a look at the first sector again. I saw you went up to sixth gear. Um, mm. Try and keep it in fifth, because it might just give you less to do with the gears. Mm. So just keep it in fifth, even if you feel like you're going to rev out. If you have a very good exit, you can rev out, but it's mm. we've got have an issue here. That's really smooth. Get up to third. Nice. Off throttle, let it rotate, rotate. Yep. Pretty good. I think he went a little bit early, which is a nice place to work from. That's alright, let it rotate and then get on full throttle. Car rotate, clip that curb, 
Nice. Nice, very smooth. Yeah, it's tricky, tricky corner that, tricky corner. You're t turning in quite, quite significantly early for that last one for the straight. Yeah, very early. You can carry a lot more speed for that corner. Right, fast down the gears. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. I think you break quite a bit too late there. But I hope your first sector was decent on this lap. Yeah. So that was a 46.9 and there was... Um, you lost easily half a second at the hairpin just by breaking too late. So I'll stick on board with you for another lap. Okay, let's let's look at this corner, Hugh, and just yeah. break at the box and we'll smash down the gears here. So break now. Nice, nice, nice turn in. Yeah, still a lot of time to find, but that, sh that was massively quicker than last lap. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if it's just when I'm watching you now, but you kind of, you turn in very early a lot of the time and actually end up kind of beyond the apex on the insides. Um, so I'm not really sure how to convey, convey it, but you can turn in a lot later. Let's try it. Probably means you can break a bit later. So you can probably break a bit later. And I do, I think you went up to third gear quite early there, yeah. So keep it in seconds. Yeah, I, I want to see this um, left hander again. And then I'll switch. I'll try and go back to day mode. Day mode. Oh, maybe this thing's not working. Yeah, again, so turning in, like, it's good to be close to the apex, but you're, like, beyond the apex. That's nice. That's really nice. Yeah, I think it's, I think for you, it's, it seems to be kind of timing the turn in. Um, I wonder if. What would be really helpful for you, I think, is to look at some videos on vision and where your eyes should be, because I suspect your eyes might be really planted on the apex, but sometimes if you look a little bit further along the track, your subconscious driving will actually get you to the apex but not beyond it, if that makes sense. I feel like you might be focusing quite a lot on the apex, and that's why you you get all over it. Yeah, like this corner here, if, if you, I know for sure, if you were looking at the exit, you'd be on the power a lot sooner. It's very, inter it's really interesting to see people's different um, driving styles. So I've exited the voice chat now. Um, that was really fun. I had no idea what to expect. I've never done this before. Um, but, you know, I have a good lap time here and I've, I've driven a lot on GT Sport now, being a YouTube person. So the process of being able to share it and, and just seeing immediately what some people are doing, like not using all of the track work, some people are quite slow on the throttle. Um, it was interesting, Issa was like all over the apex, which I think is a vision issue. Probably looking at the apex gets all over it, whereas if he looks at the exit, the apex will take care of itself. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I've recorded the whole thing. I think I might just put this up as it was, as a video. Um, if you like this, you want to get involved, please do join the Discord. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And if you've got any feedback from watching this, let me know as well. If you've watched this and um, I'm not sure I'll upload this when this daily race will be on, but if it does help you with some general tips, do let me know. That's always just really nice to hear. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining and I will see you all next time. Awkward now, I have to kind of end the video. But anyway, here we go. Thanks everyone.